Rio Manifesto, I realized that economic development and sustainable prosperity is one of the objectives, the cardinal objective of Rio Manifesto. Okay, so and you want to reduce um, the poverty height count index. Yes. Okay. So in in just a very short uh, statement, how would you want intend to achieve? So this? inclusive economic development and the um, the sustainable prosperity is something that is called to us inclusive because we don't just want to be seen as people who are capitalist okay. who are only interested in businesses and growing your economy because there are ways you can grow your economy and at this, and yet it doesn't trickle down the people, the down trodden, the poor ones in your society may not feel the impact, which is why we say we're interested in an inclusive economic develop development so that we're also thinking, just as we're growing the economy, we're thinking about the poor ones. So if you will, it is not just a capitalism state, it is a mix of capitalism and socialism, okay? We're interested in our weak ones, our vulnerable ones. We're interested in those indigent, those ones living below the poverty line that are in abject poverty. How do we lift them out of the pit of poverty? So we're going to have social programs that would accommodate those people, help them. Those will need to enhance their skills, we enhance their skills. Those will need to just lend a hand to so that they are able to, I mean, we have food security, zero hunger and all that. And then of course, it has to be sustained. That sustainability must happen with the behavior of the government in power. You have to be transparent. So you're going to de-risk investment flow. You need to be able to build the institutions, make sure that your workforce are trained and they continue to be retrained so that they have the capacity to be able to provide the services and that, you know, you, again, I said transparency, accountability, and of course, uh, accessibility of information. So part of what we've proposed mm -hmm. is to have what is known as citizen's charter. Okay. That charter is going to spell out our physical policy but above all, it's going to have a public financial management system. We're going to pop, develop it, publish it, and also make sure it's codified so that in a portal, you as a citizen can open that portal and see everything we have received as revenue, as a government. You can also see the various programs and services that we're executing and how they are impacting on the citizens. So it's, it's an inclusive governance system for us. You know, we're, we're going to make government, we're going to demystify government, if you will. We're going to make it simple so that the people know that this is their wealth, this is their money, that we're meant to use it in their in best the interest. Right. So we're supposed to be held to account and we need to show them like you know as a CEO I have to report every quarter I have to present a management report to my board and I have to tell them the state of the company so that is what I have promised to do for the Enugu every quarter I will do a press uh, uh, really? uh, conference okay. have a whole press conference informing the Enugu our action our actions, the projects we're executing, how those projects and how our actions in the various areas of intervention are likely to impact or how they are impacting their lives. Okay. That would be very wonderful if you were able to do this. Yeah, that's, that's that what we said and you know, we understand the value of the fidelity of promises made. So you're not just talking to someone with a background who could come and just say things because it's fanciful to say them.